Hello, and welcome to our first class. We're, we're going to do an introduction to uh, EDUC 506. It's a distance learning course. My name is Dr. Nancy Halbrenner, and this is our first lecture. Next week, we'll, beginning, we'll be beginning to learn a little bit about the course structure. I think for now, it's enough to get you started that we just do this brief lecture. Uh, a lot of times, I'll try to video record my lectures so that you can see me. However, um, that's going to probably not take effect until next week or the following week. For now, it's enough to listen to this lecture. Everybody got in and uh, did the first part of Learning Module 1, which was all about um, introducing yourself and posting a message in the discussion board. Next week, we'll learn a little bit more about how to do some sophisticated postings. Uh, this week is rather introductory. All the activities for this week are due um, on Sunday. Um, and so that is, that's always going to be Sunday night when they're all due. So you can check the syllabus for those due dates. For now, we're going to talk about um, what is assessment, which is the topic of this course, and why do we need to have a whole course about it? Um, if you're preparing to be teachers or maybe you're already in the classroom, you probably know that there's a lot of good discussion about assessment and how much is necessary and why do we use it. So this course is meant to introduce you to some of those basics. First of all, we know that assessment is everywhere in education. If you Google educational assessment, there are, there are over 2 million hits on this alone. So it's on everybody's mind. There must be a reason why it's on everybody's mind. Um, not only that, but major publications have picked up on it. Uh, the New York Times asks, for example, um, uh, to, you know, uh, focuses on student tests. The Wall Street Journal might have an interpretation about what assessment means, the hard truth on education. These are very typical headlines that you continue to see year after year in the media. And it has an impact on how the public views U.S. education. So it's very important to not only understand what assessment is, but its impact on education and how you might use assessment in your classroom. So first of all, you need to understand some key terms. Um, assessment is very different than test or measurement evaluation. So when we talk about each of those terms in this course, we're going to be using them in a certain way, and I need you to know what those ways are. So first of all, let's start with the basics. What is assessment? So assessment is basically the broad process of collecting, synthesizing, and interpreting information to aid classroom decision making. So we don't talk about assessment in a vacuum. That is, it has to have a purpose. And the purpose is to aid in decision making, usually either at the federal level or at the teacher level. Uh, but it doesn't just exist to file a report about how well a student is doing. Assessment is a broad umbrella term, so it encompasses those other terms you saw on the previous slide. So it's all about testing, and it's all about measurement, and it's all about evaluation. So it includes everything. Assessment is the big term. Now, what kinds of things might we assess? Well, we might and usually do assess students' cognitive abilities. So their intellectual abilities, or uh, such as memorizing knowledge, interpreting, applying knowledge. Um, if you come across Bloom's taxonomy, you know, all of those levels can be uh, assessed um, using appropriate measures. So cognitive is a big focus in the schools. However, we could also assess affective, and that has to do with feelings, attitudes, values, and interests. So a lot of surveys, for example, will assess students' interest in school. Uh, researchers consistently study students' attitudes. Um, so all of this can be assessed, and there are lots of different techniques to do that, from surveys to focus groups to all kinds of uh, you know, in-depth interviews, that type of thing. Kindergarten teachers might be more interested in assessing psychomotor or physical activities and actions. So can a student tie his shoe, for example, might be something. Uh, a, a coach or gym high school teacher might be more interested in uh, whether students have the coordination to dribble a basketball. So these are the three domains of learning that may be assessed. 
And as I said before, in a classroom context, assessment is the gathering, interpretation, and use of information to support teacher decision making. So you should always be assessing for a purpose, not because your principal tells you you have to give this test or not because, you know, your superintendent requires everybody to do it and you just shove it into a file and never look at it. I think if students are going to go through the cognitively demanding process of taking a test uh, or doing a project, for example, then we owe it to them to assess them and to look at the results and use it to make decisions in our instruction. So we've talked a little bit about assessment. Let's see what we mean by the word test. So people think of pen and paper tests, but there are actually lots of different types of tests. Uh, electronic tests that they can, digital tests that they can take online. For example, a test might not even be multiple choice or true false. It might be um, what we call constructed response, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But a test is any formal and systematic procedure for obtaining a sample of students' behaviors. So don't confuse the word, <clears throat> excuse me, behavior with um, the way they're acting. It could also mean cognitive behavior, so how much they've learned, for example. Um, and as I said, the results of the test are used to make generalizations about how students would perform on similar but untested behavior. Usually, but not always, it's paper and pencil. A test is also uh, including portfolios, projects, all those things that we ask students to do. We consider them to be tests because we are trying to understand their ability to do something. Sometimes people call test exams. I've heard them call quizzes. I've heard them call portfolios. I've heard them called uh, many, many different things. But it's any time that you're collecting information, you're testing the students. Now, I want to spend um, a little bit of time talking about something that may be confusing. You may be sitting there thinking, well, a project is not a test. But again, remember, we're not just talking about the traditional test, like a spelling test with 10 questions on it. We're talking about a test in a broader sense of the word in that it means any time you're using a procedure to understand what students know or can do. So when you give a project, you're probably giving it at the end of a unit of instruction, uh, and you're trying to understand students' abilities to complete the work um, after they've studied. For example, if you've had a unit on Colonial America, and you ask them to pick one of the 13 colonies and do a project on that, they're going to have to learn material about the pro about the colony. Maybe it's major imports and exports and it's uh, capital, et cetera. And so you're assessing through the project what they've learned. And so in that sense, it's a test as well. Now let's talk about measurement. As test is under assessment, measurement is also under assessment. Well, what is measurement? Measurement is the process of assigning numbers to categories of performance, that is, scoring a test. So you might give a test with 20 items on it, and John Paul gets 17 out of 20 items. Um, a test like an IQ test, uh, you know, a student might score 120 on that. Sarah might get a 72. You might grade a project and say that student has an A. Uh, in kindergarten, these can also be, you know, uh, can the student perform the skill? So going back, for example, to our um, example to, of students tying their shoes, it's yes or no. Can the student do that? Uh, yes or no. So a measurement is any time it is assigned a number or category to, to, um, to measure something, whether a student can do something. Now, let's talk for about the final term, which is evaluation. So evaluation is using the results of the measurement from the test to see, to make a judgment. The process of judging, and so evaluation is judging, the quality or value of a performance or course of action. So for example, let's say you give a reading test. 
And so you're trying to assess students' reading abilities. You give a reading test. You score that reading test and you get a measurement. And then you make uh, an evaluation or a judgment about whether a student is performing at a high enough level to be moved to the next reading group. So evaluation is always the outcome or the product of assessment, producing a decision or course of action. So I hope this explains a little bit about assessment. You've got the test, which is the vehicle that you uh, measure something, the measurement itself, which is the which is the number or you know can the student do something, and the evaluation, which is the judgment on the part of the teacher about whether what that score means. So let's let's try one. I want you to think about this, and I want you to think about whether it's um, assessment, measurement, evaluation, and there should be a, another category in there called test. Um, so for example, let's say you are um, giving a, uh, you want students to learn a group of spelling words and you ask them to get out and number their papers from one to 10 and you call out the spelling words. Um, which one is that? So that is both assessment because it encompasses uh, the next one, which is test. You're doing assessment through giving a test. Now suppose you use those results, you get those papers and you score them. What is that? That would be measurement because you're assigning a number. And then finally, if you use the papers to uh, understand how well students are doing on the group of words and whether you need to review them with the class, that would be evaluation. So we've talked about what assessment is, but let's talk for a minute about why should you assess in your classroom. There are many purposes and groups that use assessment, and we're going to talk about a few of them. First of all, national and state uh, policymakers, folks like the Department of Education, for example, use them for a whole host of reasons, usually to develop policies or to set state and national standards. You might have uh, standards at a, at a state level that come up, for example, the, ne the Next Generation Science Standards uh, were developed as a result of assessment where we know the students were performing poorly on science. and so. Um, a group wrote, uh, wrote national standards for that, and some states have adopted them, and some have used their own. <clears throat> so that falls into the category of tracking progress of national and state achievements. There's a, um, there's a nation's report card that's given every four years, I think it is, and uh, we track the achievements through that uh, nationwide of a sample of students, so we know how students are doing in fourth grade and fifth grade on reading standards. Um, sometimes uh, these national and state um, bodies will provide resources to districts in need um, to provide uh, to improve learning. Uh, I used to teach in Florida where uh, rewards or sanctions were given for, student, for schools who met state achievements or who did not meet state, state achievements. It's a very complicated and, and controversial also step to penalize a school uh, who is not meeting a state achievement. And uh, many times we don't obviously use teacher tests for this because uh, teacher tests are very specific to their own classroom purposes, but we'll use standardized assessment results. So think of tests, for example, um, like the CAT um, is, a, is a standardized um, test that's broadly used. District and school administrators, superintendents, and principals also use the results of these tests for their districts to identify certain program strengths and weaknesses. So they might look at the results of a reading test uh, given district-wide and say we need to improve our middle school reading, and they might alter the curriculum. Uh, they might alter the textbooks, for example. Um, they might give more professional development, so they improve instruction. Monitor, they might go in and observe classroom teachers to see what's going on. And so there is a there are a wide swath at the district and school level um, of purposes for assessment. Parents and students actually, this might surprise you, use assessment as well. 
So for example, they use it to judge students' strengths and weaknesses, monitors their own students' progress. I know when I was a parent, you know, it was give me the report card, I wanna see how you're doing, meeting with teachers. And something we don't really like to talk about or think about, they actually use these to judge teacher quality. And so this is kind of a catch-22, right? Because if you are assessing students appropriately, you're probably going to have some high grades in your class, a lot in the middle, and some lower grades in your class. Um, but sometimes the parents with the students who have the lower grades or even people in the middle or sometimes even the high students who think they should be getting higher grades will come and complain and then sometimes the burden is put on you to show it's it's not you being a bad teacher. But I think this is the most important use of assessment when we as teachers use it to promote student learning. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different kinds of assessment in this class. Formative assessment is really powerful. Um, that is assessing when students are learning, so we monitor their progress. We can, uh, I like to think of us as like a, a boat on the river, and if we see the rapids up ahead, we can correct the course. That's the way it is. We can judge and alter what's going on in our classroom based on assessment results. We can say, okay, well, you know, the class didn't really get this concept. I need to back up and slow down just a bit and make sure that this half of the class understands before I move forward. Uh, sometimes assessment is used to identify students who need additional support or challenge because too frequently those students will be left out and they'll feel under challenged, which can lead to all kinds of behavior and other academic issues. We can use assessments to motivate students to do the well, and we'll talk a little bit about, about this more later in the class. We can use student assessment, and this is a very frequent practice, to place students in groups according to what they understand or what they need. And finally, we provide feedback to parents and to students through parent and student conferences through assessment. We'll be talking about three phases of classroom assessment. Um, prior to instruction, uh, which we do some early sizing up, sometimes called pre-assessment. The assessment that goes on as we're teaching, sometimes called formative or diagnostic assessment. And then the official grading or summative assessment that occurs at the end. So if you study this table, you'll see uh, that pre-assessment is really to provide teachers with a quick perception and practical knowledge of students' characteristics. Um, it usually occurs as a lot of pre-assessment that goes on the first couple of weeks of school. You're probably, if you're teaching, going through that now, getting to know your class, giving some diagnostic tests, talking to them. Um, it's largely informal and very quick and on the fly. And we'll be learning some formative assessment, I mean, pre-assessment pre techniques. Um, but there are some more formal uh, tests that can be given. We are looking at primarily cognitive assessment, but we also may be looking to see effective. So for example, if you give a student interest survey at the beginning of the year, you're using affective pre-assessment. Uh, psychomotor, if you can give a kindergarten uh, students a checklist of can you tie your can you tie your shoes, can you brush your hair, that's a type of pre-assessment. And a lot of times uh, we'll keep these, we'll keep some written records, but sometimes we'll keep the information as we're discussing things with students, we're noting weaknesses uh, or strengths, and we're keeping that in our own minds. I think one of the most powerful types of assessment is formative assessment. This is the type of assessment that goes on during the instruction daily, minute by minute, hour by hour. When you're with your class, you're doing formative assessment. If you're asking questions, you're noting who's answering, who has a weak, weaker understanding, who has a stronger understanding. Um, but you also <clears throat> might be doing it through observation. You might uh, even give some homework during a unit of instruction and the student's ability to answer those questions correctly gives you an idea of who has an understanding and who doesn't. We have a whole project in the class centered on formative assessment, so you'll learn a lot more about that. Again, largely cognitive and effective, although some psychomotor for early childhood. And um, 
when you keep records here, you do you do a little more writing down than you do with pre-assessment. A lot of times uh, you're putting actual, um, you're actually putting in strategies into your lesson plans for how to do formative assessment and you're keeping some records. The big type of assessment that everybody thinks about when you say assessment is usually summative assessment. This comes at the end. This is the grading, uh, the grouping, the placing. Uh, it happens periodically through the school year. So you might give a unit of instruction on integers and then you might give a test on integers and that goes into your grade book. This is what happens after instruction. A lot of times it's much more formal than the previous two, formal tests, papers, quizzes, project. And by and large, the type of evidence that's gathered is mainly cognitive. Um, standardized tests uh, are, are part of, part summative, although we're talking about a cl classroom assessment, so we're not gonna talk about standardized tests when we talk about classroom assessment. It's usually focused on what your instruction has been for the year. Um, and then finally, as I, as I mentioned, many more formal records kept in your grade book, on the report cards, in the school files. Some of you can probably go back to your middle school and find you know, records of summative assessment that that school still maintains. So that's it for this week. I hope you've learned a little bit about assessment. Um, for next week, I'd like you to read chapter two, standards and cognitive learning targets, and we'll start to talk about what all good uh, assessment should be based around, which is um, standards or learning targets. And you'll need to do learning module two by Sunday, September 16th. Please don't hesitate to email me. You have my email in the syllabus on, and on the course site. And don't hesitate to email me if you have any questions. I'll always also be happy to speak with you by phone if you or if, even if you want to come into Mercy, uh, meet with you personally. So everybody have a good week.